If you have a Squarespace website and you're doing SEO while trying not to impact the design of your website too much, then you may have faced this problem. You know that your H1 is super important on your Squarespace webpage. It communicates to Google what you want it to rank for. However, sometimes it looks ugly. Sometimes throwing your keyword into your website's visitor's face is a little bit too much and you're not fully comfortable with doing that, which is why I've collaborated with Chris Schwartz Edmondson on this video, a good friend of mine and Squarespace coding expert, who's going to show you how you can customize the size of your H1 so it's still at the top of your web page, but much smaller so you can still incorporate your keywords, but then have a bigger heading just below that that tells more of the story of your brand or just doesn't come across as, as SEO-y, if that makes sense. As you can see here, this this is an example that Chris is going to walk you through later in the video. And I will also add a link in the description to Chris's YouTube channel if you want to get more coding tutorials. Because of course, what's the point of doing SEO if our website looks ugly? Which is why I wanted to bring Chris onto the channel. So without further ado, we'll let him walk you through it. Hey guys, my name is Chris Schwartz Edmiston from Schwartz Edmiston Web Design and I specialize in customizing Squarespace with CSS. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how we can use CSS to style an H1 heading like any of the other heading sizes or like our paragraph sizes using CSS. And to understand why we might need to do this, let's go ahead and jump into the site. So this is my actual live services page for my one-on-one -on -one calls. And I've scanned it with the SEO space and I can see that I'm getting some dings on my H1 heading. And the H1 heading instructs search engines as to what the page is about. And therefore there are some rules around how to structure the H1 heading so that it's like the most SEO compliant. So my H1 heading is only 20 characters and it should be between 40 and 60 characters. And then my H1 heading only has three words and it should have between five and 12 words. And then you should only have one H1 heading per page, which is the only thing that I'm doing correctly. So essentially, to maximize you know, the SEO value of my page, my H1 heading needs to be longer. And the reason that I haven't made it longer is because my H1 heading is so big, if I made it really long, you know, it would kind of throw off the visual design of my page. So I'm sort of choosing to hurt my SEO in favor of making the design look good. And we shouldn't have to make this choice. And so that's the importance of today's video. I'm gonna show you how I can actually make my H1 heading look like a smaller kind of like top tag. And then I'm gonna make my H2 heading down below look visually like my H1 heading. And that way, you know, I'll have good SEO compliance. And then also I'm gonna preserve the visual design of my page. So if that didn't make total sense, I promise it's going to. So let's go ahead and dive into the site. So I'll close out of that. And I'm here in my custom CSS window. So I separate my CSS in my custom CSS window into different sections. So I have a typography section here and I'm just gonna scroll down to the bottom. So if I right click on the H1 heading and click inspect, we can see how Squarespace is sort of setting up like the font sizes. So in the right hand side, we're gonna scroll down until we see font size and you can see it's using a calculation. So it's taking this value, which is stored in a variable, which is this variable here is just equal to 3.2, that's it. And then it's subtracting one, multiplying by 1.2 viewport width units. So times 1.2% of the width of the screen and then it's adding one rem to that. So this value again is just a placeholder value and this could be set to anything else. So if we click on this value, it'll take us to where that variable is stored and it's stored on just the root kind of like document. So these are all the kind of like base level typography settings that are stored in the CSS as variables. And when we change something in our site styles editor for the typography, it's then just updating these variables here inside of the CSS. So that's kind of how like the editor is talking to the CSS styles and styling the elements. So here we can see that there's these different values. So we have the heading one size, which is 3.2 rem, and then it has the heading one size value, which is just the number without the rem unit. So these are the numbers that we care about because they're using the heading one size value inside of the calculation. So here's our heading one size, our heading two size, three, for our large text size, so that's our P1, 
Our normal text size is our just normal like paragraph two, and then the small text size is our P3. So you can see all of those values are stored as variables here. And so to change kind of like the, the font size of our heading, all we have to do is play with these numbers here. Now, the reason I can't just like set my H1 to be 40 pixels, for example, we can go ahead and do that to illustrate it. So I'll use my block identifier Chrome extension to find the block ID for this element. And this is an H1. And I'll say this font size should be, let's say like 40 pixels. So we've made our H1 a little bit smaller. But the reason that I don't want to like set it in pixels is because the calculation makes the size of the text fluid. So you can see like the rest of the text is getting a little bit smaller. And then as it gets bigger, it gets a little bit bigger. But because we've set this to a static 40 pixels, the relationship between the size of the text changes because this one is just static and this text is kind of changing in scale. So to preserve the fluid nature of the resizing of the heading, my method that I'm going to show you, uh, we can't use this method. We can only use the method that I'm going to show you, essentially. So all we have to do is change the value of our heading one size, which is great. So I'm going to close this out. And the way that we can set variables in the CSS is we just take the variable name. So in this case, it's heading one size value. So I'm just going to copy that from the CSS. And we'll set it to a new value. So right now it's set to 3.2. If I wanted it to be the size of my heading two instead, I would just set it to 2.6. So let's go ahead and do that. 2.6 and boom. So now my heading one is visually the same size as my heading two. So you can see these are Let's see, is this even a heading two? No, that's a heading three. Well, anyway, if I had a heading two on this page, is this a heading two? Nope. <laughs> okay. If I had a heading two on the page, this would be the same size as it. In fact, let's make it an H3 since apparently I love H3s. So our heading three size value is 2.2. So let's make it 2.2. There we go. So now we can see it's the same size as our H3. And the cool thing is all it's doing is replacing that value inside of the calculation. And so it's going to keep that responsive fluid type, which is great. So if I resize the window now, you can see it's bigger on big screen sizes and it gets smaller proportionally with the rest of the content on the screen, which is awesome. So this would be kind of the quick way to do it, but let's say you handed this site off to a client and they ended up later down the road changing the size of their H3 font. Well, because you've hard-coded this value to 2.2, it's now not gonna match the rest of the H3s on the site. So we can take this a step further and instead of just hard-coding a value into the H1 size value, we can set it equal to the heading three size value which is equal to 2.2. So what I wanna do instead is I wanna set this variable value equal to the value of this variable. And this variable equals 2.2, but that's coming directly from the style editor. So if this value ever changes, then this value is also gonna change. So we've done the same exact thing as we had before, except we're directly getting that value if it were to change in the future from the editor and you know everything is going to be good to go in the future. So that's kind of the philosophy behind how we can make our h1 be a size of another heading. And in my case, so I want my h1 to be the size of my body text. So let me go ahead and it's easiest if I just click on the value here and then we get taken to the list and here we have the normal text size value which is set to 1. So I'm going to take this variable and I'll paste it in there. So now my H1 looks like my normal body text. And then what I can do is I can edit the page. Let me go ahead and save that and edit the page. And then I can come down here and I can make this an H2. And I'm going to say Squarespace, one-on-one -on -one Squarespace call. Okay. And then we're gonna style this H2 to look like an H1. 
now our heading one, we could call it something else. So I'm just going to put something here for now because I can't think on the fly during the tutorial. But you would want to do some sort of like juicy, make sure it's 40 to 60 characters in between five and 12 words. And you would want to make sure, you know, it's very descriptive about, you know, what your service is about. So now this is our, our juicy H1 that tells the search engine what our page is about. And then this is just kind of visually our H2, which we now want to style like an H1. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the block ID because this is all in a single text block. It's going to be the same as what we had before, but I'll just go ahead and grab that. And now we're styling the H2 and we can copy this here, except we want the H2 size to be equal to the heading one size. And there we go. So now we have a great H1 heading that looks like a body tag. And then we have our H2 heading, which is styled like an H1 heading. And it's just by, you know, taking these variable names and then applying them as different variable settings, essentially. Now, one thing that we can do is I've sort of, instead of targeting the block ID every time, I have preferred in the past to use a code block. And you can set up styles as classes that you can apply to the different headings. So for example, I could have one that I called paragraph. And so the paragraph setting is going to take an H1 and it's going to apply it as a paragraph size. And then we can also have like an H1 class that we apply. And so it'll take an H2 heading and it'll make it an H1 size. And then what I can do is I can rewrite this in a code block. So I'll hit save. And it just makes it a little bit more reusable than having to target the block IDs every time. But again, this is like kind of going above and beyond. If you would rather just copy the block IDs, then, you know, that's a totally fine way of doing it. But I'll show you kind of like the system way of doing it. So here, this is going to be our H1. And then we got to end our H1. And then we want it to have a class. Of paragraph. And now you can see our H1 is styled like a body. And then here, this is going to be our H2. So we'll add an H2 tag. Make sure we close our H2 tag. And this is going to have a class that's equal to H1. So now it gets bigger like an H1. And then here, this is just a paragraph. And then we need to end the paragraph. Close that tag. And then here we have another paragraph. And make sure we always close our tags after we open them. So here I've recreated the same exact thing in a code block. But here in the code block, we now have a little bit more control over, you know, if I wanted like less margin bottom below this H1, then I can do an inline style here. And I can say margin bottom. Maybe I want that to be zero. And then here I can come in here and say, I'll copy this style. And then I'll make the margin top zero. Now they're going to be closer together. And now I can, you know, edit this. Maybe I actually want like 10 pixels of margin between. So we have a little bit more control over the spacing if we do it in a code block, because then we can write inline styles here, kind of get this exactly how we want it. But going back to the typography that I mentioned before, we're just easily able to change these styles by simply adding like the classes that we've set up. And if I wanted to do this with any other heading size, let me go ahead and I'll get rid of this and we'll put this over here. Like so. And I'll hit save. OK, so I can get rid of these block IDs now. And the cool thing is, so we could set this up with every single heading size. So if I wanted to make an H2 look like a body, all I have to do is add the class of paragraph. Same with H3. Same with H4. And then if I wanted to make any of the other heading sizes look like an H1, I can do that as well. So we'll make a heading 3 look like it. And we'll make a heading look like it. So now we kind of have these like repeatable 
styles that we can set up on elements in code blocks. So let's say, for example, that this was like an H3. Because it has the class of H1 already, its visual style is not going to change. It's still going to look like an H1 because it's getting the style, you know, from this class that we've added. But like semantically for SEO purposes, this is, I want it to be an H2, but this is my like, you know, juicy H1 heading up here. So hopefully that was clear enough. So we don't want to just override font styles with, you know, pixel values because then it makes the heading stuck fixed at that pixel value. And if you go down to mobile, 40 pixels on mobile looks huge. Whereas here, let's go ahead and go down to mobile, see how it looks. Yeah, so because it's using the responsive font sizing, it's also going to get smaller on mobile appropriately. So this is a great way to resize your headings. And again, it gives us a little bit more control if we do it in a code block and apply it as classes. We just have more control over the spacing. So that was a really deep dive. I hope it wasn't too complex and hopefully I explained it in a way that made it graspable. If you have any questions, you know, definitely you can leave them below in the comments. I'll try and stop by every once in a while and check them out. Feel free to send me an email through my website as well, schwartzedmiston.com contact. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope this was helpful.